of salt. Hey everybody and welcome back. And today we're going to tackle the capacitors. That's about it. Let's get to it. Okay, so we should all be familiar with this view by now. Um, I'm just looking down on top of my workspace and let's just quickly get started. So I've already found capacitor one, which is a 100 microfarad electrolytic capacitor. And we should probably say a little something about electrolytic, electrolytic capacitors before we get started. So you should notice here that one leg is longer than the other, and we've got a stripe down one side. So there are two things that we need to know about electrolytic capacitors. One is that they're polarized, which basically means they have a positive and a negative side, and you've got to put them in the right way. So the long leg denotes positive, and the stripe down the side, you can actually see on this one, it has kind of a, a minus on it. And that strip denotes negative. It's always best to double check with everything because if you put it in the wrong way, it might take you a long time to figure out why it's wrong. But what is really helpful is we have a photo of what the finished circuit board would look like on screen. So we can kind of put this into place, which we have done here. And we can see that our negative side lines up with where the negative side would be on the photograph. So that's good. All right. I decided yesterday evening to have a tidy up because my kitchen table has been completely taken over by this workspace. And, well, kitchen table, my dining room table, but my dining room is in my living room, so it kind of made the whole space look like a massive tip. So, I changed that. You know, the only things that we leave out are strategically placed books on the coffee table to make us seem more intellectual than we already are. Than we already are. That kind of implies we're intellectual in the first place. Hmm. But in that tidy up, it seems that I have misplaced my toe scissors that uh, <laughs> I've been using to cut these. So. Turns out my toe scissors were still out, and in one fell swoop, I have undone all of the tidying I did yesterday. Now, if that's not progress, I don't know what is. It's always important to have a cup of coffee with you when you're soldering as well, because the jitters from too much caffeine really helps to keep good solder joints, uh, keep making good solder joints. It's, it's super important. But while we talked about electrolytic capacitors, we're going to continue with our electrolytic caps. And what's handy is that on the parts list here, they specify whether they're electrolytic, um, boxed film capacitors or, or ceramic pots, which is, which is great. Um, let me just check the value. So this is a 22 microfarad, which is what we need. So let's get capacitor two in place. Same again, long leg, positive, Short leg, not so positive. Let's get that in place. So again, you're joining me on a Sunday where we do our quiet projects. 
in case the neighbours decide to file a big enough complaint to kick me out of my apartment, which wouldn't be ideal, um, considering I still have around 21 months left of my work contract. I don't know where I'd go, I don't know what I'd do. Yeah, just using a little bit more electrical tape to hold that in place. Which, uh, yeah, it is a bit disappointing, but it's also fair. You know, you don't want to make too much noise. But I just guess that our standards are slightly different, which is fine. Um, a bit disappointing because uh, at the end of the noise making allotted time yesterday, I had just finished marking up an enclosure for drilling. I think I may have mentioned that in the last video. Um, I'm recording these quite close together because I'm just really enjoying this and I want to do more builds. I don't know. I seem to have bridged something there. That's fine. We'll just chop our toasters in the middle and see if we can disconnect that. Which we'll be able to. That won't be a problem. Might take a few passes, but... That's fine. Now, that's not working, so we'll get the solder sucker out. I mean, really, it's best just to not make mistakes in the first place, isn't it? And don't worry, that was my Facebook, not yours. I've muted it now. Now I'm just going to get some small pliers and then try and bend that out of the way. These are big pliers, but they've got a short top, so... Yeah. So that's good. I'm just going to take off the tape on the top. Again, I still think it's kind of fun that it gets all sweaty. <laughs> and um, malleable. But, um, let's just check with the multimeter that those two aren't connected. Yep, and those two were not. Isn't that lovely? Right, so let's get the next slide on this done. So my eyes aren't great, so trying to find the right things to solder can be quite difficult at times. But yeah, let's move on to C3, which is well, C3 and C4. So we did the 22 UF, which was C2. And now we want two 100 narrow farad caps, which are going to be C3 and C4. 
and these are boxed film. Boxed film capacitors look like these. Two little legs, not polarised. Lovely. This is 22 nanofarad. So we want 100 nanofarad. And there are two. 2.2. They're kind of all loose in here as well, so. Weird. Let's just pull out all the box films there. This is point one. This is four n. Point one. So I'm going to assume that those point ones. So it's twenty two nanofarad. Twenty two nanofarad. And this is a forty eight k. Which I've not come across before. Uh, it's a 63, so it might be the 68. This is a 2.2 nanofarad. Yeah, the 2.2 is definitely there. Right, so we should have five different types. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so these will be, these will be the. I mean, they both got different markings actually, and I don't. I don't have anything to measure capacitance, so my multimeter is not great. So, let's do a quick Google. So, a 0.1J100 capacitor. Ah, here we go. There's a help me identify a capacitor thread on Pinkfish Media. Yep, so somebody said it's a 0.1 microfarad. Um, and I believe micro is... Yep, so that's 100 nanofarad. I'm not so great on my uh, SI units and such anymore. Um, I used to know them properly from when I did physics at A-level, but it often helps me to have a chart printed out, which isn't something I've done for the new space I'm in. So we'll have a look for the 0.1J63, the capacitor label also means 1 microfarad is 100 nanofarad. So that's fine, both of these are exactly what we're looking for, which is C3 and C4. Really thinking about it, I should have had a look in the circuit diagram and decided to figure out what these do. Um, so let's see if I can see anything. So C4 looks like it is a high pass filter on the input. So C4 will do a little bit of DC current blocking. Well, not a little bit, it will. So one of the features of a capacitor is that it will block DC current and allow AC current, well, signal. Let's just call it signal. It'll allow, it'll allow AC and won't allow DC. And kind of the way that that's positioned with respect to R4 means that it's creating a or is that a low pass filter? No, that's a high pass filter, I'm sorry. So the, the reason why that works is because your capacitor will allow higher signals through and sort of block lower signals because a low frequency signal is effectively more DC than a higher frequency signal because it's closer to zero, I guess. Um, so yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of what that, that capacitor is doing, what C4 is doing. Um, C3 I don't see immediately on the circuit diagram yet. Ah, 
Yeah, C3 looks like it's doing some power conditioning. Same with C1, um, which is basically just going to smooth out the input signal. Um, well, not the input audio signal, but the input power signal. So if you've got any ripples from your power supply or even your, your battery source, although that's not exactly common with batteries, that's uh, just kind of... Okay, something strange just happened and my video turned off. So we want C5 and C11 here, which are right next to each other. Again, a little bit of tape. But what is cute is my little coffee evolution mug. I brought this with me from Huddersfield. It's a coffee evo. is one of my my favourite coffee shops in Huddersfield. And uh, I used to go there a lot in my final year. Um, I used to live on a big hill and sort of going home in between lectures to make dinner. It wasn't silly, it was just a big effort. I don't think I'd ever walked up that hill without being out of breath at the end. But uh, yeah, it was a... Uh, they do some good sandwiches. They did like a goat's cheese one that was... Goat, like, was it goat's cheese? There was a Swiss cheese sandwich as well. It was very good. It's like Swiss cheese and cheddar, I think it was. But yeah, Whew. when those guys are open again after Corona, you should definitely go. I used to hang out there a lot as part of my last job as well. Um, often when I'd meet up with students, we would meet up in a coffee shop in the town centre when I was doing work as kind of like a, a student pastor, I guess. Um, but what was cool was uh, one day I was I was there. So, you might notice the jump in scene. It is a few weeks later and I've been editing this video, well, series, slowly. I'm just trying to put out one a week to show you what's going on. And I've come to the capacitors and I've realised, ah, my space right now on my phone. So that means that all the video didn't record. So I can prove to you that we finished the capacitors because here's the completed circuit board. Uh, I'm still, I've still not put it into a box. But yeah, I'm a little disappointed because I had some, you know, fun stories and I was, you know, talking about coffee shops and uh, an artist I was watching in there once. But, too bad. The circuit's board's done, the capacitors are in, and I think I've got some more videos later and some B-roll where I can show you me putting in the diodes. But besides that, I'm kind of done. We're waiting on the box. I'll do another episode to take you through drilling the enclosure. But... Yeah, I think we've got one episode left, and then maybe a, a trial I can show you later. But unfortunately, that's it for today with capacitors and some diode B-roll. So, sorry about that. Have a good week, and I'll uh, see you next week.